In today's episode of Osiavos, we turn one of my favourite bull bars, the factory ARB bar for a GQ, into this. So, obviously the bar's back off the car. Uh, I'm about to head over to Shilty's now and weld in the 12 mil plate for the recovery points and the winch base, which I've just finished prepping. So a fair bit of work with the angle grinder there, up to about the third grinding disc now, and probably about the second packet of cutoff wheels. So that's going well. Um, you're probably asking, why aren't you using like a plasma cutter or an oxy torch or something? I don't have any of them here, and I can get access to them, but you know what? It's just easier to do it here, and the whole point of this is you can do this in your shed, right? You don't need thousands of dollars worth of equipment. That angle grinder is like sub 200 bucks, you know? Just having a crack, all right? This has been fun, a lot of time, but if you didn't want to spend any time on it, you'd go pay the money and buy a bar that's already built. So, about to chuck everything on the nav, head over to Shilty's, and uh, we'll get some shots of welding some real plate. <laughs> So that's all the 12 mil plates for the recovery points and the winch base plate welded into the bar. Thanks to Shilty for the use of your welder in your workshop, mate. Absolutely stoked that welder. I mean, 280 amp, I think it was, and I had it dialed, so I never would have had a chance of doing it here. Good to really get some good heat into it, especially given that I want those recovery points to be like strong, something you can hook a snatch strap to and have no fear whatsoever of it coming off. So stoked with how all this is coming out. So now that the thick plates are welded in, what is next? So, those are done, got to just clean up everything a little bit, um, just basically welding spatter and that sort of thing to clean up, nothing major. Then I'm going to go ahead and weld in the plates that you saw earlier that I had tacked in, that I took out to weld this in. It's a bit of a jigsaw, but it's coming together. So, tack those all back in, make sure everything still lines up because with heat, things always want to move and never in the way that you want them to. So, go ahead and weld all that back in, hopefully everything still lines up. And from there, yeah, clean everything up and throw it back on the car, throw the winch back in and see how it looks. So that's top plates all welded in. Um, took a lot longer than I probably should have, making everything really tidy. So welded them in, they're only three mil plates, so not heavy compared to, well, not heavy compared to the rest of the bar. Basically the same material as what the everything factory on the bar would have been made out of, all the non-structural stuff. So they're still plenty solid enough for what's really just a winch cover. Yeah, spent way too long making it all really neat, but I'm really happy with the outcome. And uh, I'm about to swing the patrol in here and fit it up for the last time before I send it out to get blasted and primed. So hopefully it looks good. So I just remembered a couple of things that I forgot to mention while I was going along and building this. I've sort of done so much work with welding and grinding, there's been a couple of things that I may have just skipped over. So I've added a light bracket to this bottom tube. It had a couple of tags welded to it, but they didn't suit the lights that I have anyway. I put them too close to the uprights so the lights wouldn't fit. I've run that full width, so it's one plate running the whole way across. The idea of that is I'll see where I want to mount the lights once the bar's on the car, how it looks with everything. Um, another thing to consider is cooling, how much of your radiator and I've got an auto cooler so how much of that you're blocking with your spotties so that's why I want to set them out once it's on the car and see how I can I mean ideally you don't want them there in the first place but also I want to be able to see what I'm doing at night so we'll just see how they fit then I've cut out the fair lead hole for the OCAM fair lead that comes with the winch. I've also added another two antenna mounts right up the top there. It had one on this side from factory, which is still there, but I've gone ahead and added another one. So two on the passenger side total and one on the driver's side. And everyone says you can't want to have one on the driver's side. Well, by rights, you can't have one anywhere. So that's an obstruction. It doesn't matter whether it's directly in front of the driver or not. But yeah, those are, I, I mean, way overkill. I'm probably never gonna have three antennas on the car, but everything I'm doing is to the point of, I don't wanna have to weld things onto it in the future. So mainly because I don't wanna have to paint it again, take it off the car again. So if it's just drilling a hole or whatever, I can do that on the car. It's a lot easier. So hence the extra antenna brackets, the extra headlight bracket, just try and make everything a bit future proof because you never know where we'll end up. So if you ever put a bar on a GQ or basically a lot of old Forbies are the same, um, you'll know that in one side of the chassis rail they just don't have threads at all. Now I've seen a lot of ways of getting around this with plates and nuts tacked weld to them and nuts with bits of, well what it had was nuts with bits of fence wire welded to them which is a classic, I've like seen that everywhere. But um, I found these, I saw them on another bloke's car and I asked him where he got them from. Uh, Ray Spread make these specifically for GQ patrols. 
So one side's got a couple of threads in it because that side's already got, driver side's already got uh, three threads in the rail. But for the passengers, look, it's the exact same size as the inner of the rail. It's got all the nuts welded to the inside of it already. It's even CAD plated. Um, and that just drops straight in the front of the rail, just like that. And it lines up with all the factory bolt holes, gives you threads in all of those without having to swear at it. Too easy. So the bars on the GQ, I've spent about the last 15 minutes just standing here looking at it from every angle, marvelling in what I've made. Um, I am stoked. It is, it's great. Like I'm, I'm stoked with how it looks, how it ties into everything, you know, it ties in around the winch really well, ties into the front of the car really well. Um, yeah, I'm just stoked with every angle of it. So uh, it's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but that's the thing about making your own bar. I've made it to suit myself. I've made it to suit how I want the car to look and what I want the car to do. So yeah, I guess if you think this is something you want to have a crack at, get out there and have a crack. I'm no professional at it, but it's been a lot of fun and I can say that no one else has a bar quite like this. I guess now it's just um, continue the work. So it's all cleaned up, it's all sorted. So unbolt it, take the winch out of it, take it off, I'm getting it sandblasted and primed. And then I'm gonna paint it in the Dominator, same as I did the rock sliders. So keen to see how it looks once it's all really finished. But, uh, yeah. For now, I reckon I'm just gonna spend about another half an hour looking at it. So, as you might see, I've got the bar back from being sandblasted and primed, so it's ready to go ahead and paint. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be spraying it with Dominator, same as I did the rock sliders, so it should all blend in. I really do like the, uh, the black and red contrast, so that's what I'm going for again with this. It's held up really well on the rock sliders, and I like the finish, it's sort of, it's a, a ripple finish, but like a splatter finish, I guess you could call it, but it's also stays super glossy, which with the rock sliders means that nothing really sticks to them, which is good when you're living on dirt roads. And it, yeah, it just gives the car a good look because there's not always dirt stuck to everything. Now, we did run through this when we did the rock sliders, but it's really basic. So, like I said, bar's been primed already, so that's sorted. You can spray this over bare metal, but for heavy duty stuff like this, it's better that it's sprayed on a primer. So that's sorted. I've gone ahead and run a bit of seam sealer over some of the spots where I'd sort of um, stitched weld sort of plates. So there's some spots where I didn't fully weld everything just because it was unnecessary. So I've seam sealed everything there just to stop any water getting in later and causing rust. Also just to make things look neat. So that's sorted, that's cured. Next step will be just to run over everything with a bit of scotch bright, wax and grease remover, and then we're ready to spray this. Now, as I said, we use this in the rock slider video, so all the information's there if you wanna see how it's done. But I mean, this is probably the easiest two pack paint you'll ever spray. Basically two cans, two parts, small can, big can, shake both of them, tip the small can into the big can, screw the cap back on, shake that, screw it onto the gun that comes in the box, and you're good to go. Uh, make sure you drain your compressor because if you're like everybody else you probably haven't done it in the last two years. If you've got an air dryer on your air supply even better but yeah not everyone does so that's no great stress. This stuff's pretty user friendly so it's not as hard as some automotive paints are. Set your reg to around 60 to 70 psi. Um, tends to where I find it sort of sprays neatly and this stuff sprays pretty thick and fast, so it's not um, it's not a mist, it sort of sprays, because it's an underbody gun essentially. It sort of sprays like a hose, so yeah. Which is good when you're spraying outside like this, because if there's a slight breath of wind, it doesn't all blow away. Yeah, so uh, let's get into it. I've got the booth all set up, as you can see. The weather is good so far. Uh, if you're in Victoria, when you're watching this, it's probably been a couple of weeks already, but it, it has been constant rain for the last few days, so I'm trying to fit this in while the weather's good. So let's get into it and hopefully it stays this way. Okay, so that's the bar painted. It has come up absolutely mint. Um, especially considering the conditions. I'm under a gazebo. I moved outside, it started to sprinkle rain this morning, as it is again now. So I chucked the gazebo up, um, wasn't going to let a bit of rain stop us, so pushed on. And uh, yeah, the finish has come up awesome. Um, like I said, painted outside, bit of breeze, bit of rain, but um, considering all that, yeah, uh, it's come up great. So yeah, um, now it's tacked off. Um, it's still a bit soft and the front I've sort of, I put, I put a second coat, so I sprayed the whole bar, then I put a second coat on the front. Um, so the front's still a little bit more tacky than the back, but I have no real other way of moving this. So what I'm gonna do is bring the GQ up here and nose it up to the bar, then slide the bar onto the chassis rails and just secure it with a couple of bolts. Um, 
just to move it into the shed so it can cure properly overnight. This stuff hardens up properly after about 72 hours, so I'm not going to go fit in the winch to it or anything yet. So yeah, let's see how it looks on the car. All right, so it's now the other side of the weekend. The paint on the bar is drier and it is looking amazing. Uh, so it's time to get ready to mount this bad boy in. Now, this is the Ocam 12,000 pound winch, which I spoke about earlier. I pretty much fabricated the bar to suit the winch, which is a bit backwards, but that's how I roll. So um, I'll go through a lot more of the features later, like once it's actually in the bar and we can test it and see everything it does. But basically uh, mounting options, you've got, you can mount, this is the, uh, relay box which you can either remote mount or mount to the winch it comes with mounting holes on top of it So I've set it up that way and when I made my cover plates for the bar I made allowances for that so that that could mount right there. You could remote mount it There's positives and negatives to that basically it's just a bit more wiring I thought about mounting it in the engine bay, but to be honest there is space but by the time I go and add a few more things, there's not going to be that much space. And basically I figured the shorter I could keep the control cables from the relay box to the actual winch motor, the better. And it's all it's all waterproof in that anyway, so that's not a problem. It's fine to be out in the weather. Now I've gone ahead and wired that up already. So all I've got to do is run power supply to it from the battery, which we're going to do properly. We'll go through that as well. But a very common problem with winches I seem to find is and just electrical stuff in general is bad earths. People tend to just like, oh, I'll just tech screw this earth into the chassis rail and that'll be fine. Uh, so we're not doing that. I'm gonna run some proper feeds to this thing so that that's not gonna cause us dramas later on down the track. So uh, yeah, let's get this thing mounted up in the bar and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got the winch mounted up in the bar. It's looking grouse, fits perfect, so I'm stoked with that. I figured before I bolted the bar onto the car for the last time, I'd try and answer one of the big questions that I know a lot of people are going to ask otherwise. What does it weigh? Because I took an ARB steel bar, a non-winch bar, that wouldn't have been light to start with. Then I cut the center section out of that, added some 12 mil plate for a winch mount, which is definitely overkill, but it's never going to move. Then I put a 6 mil plate in front of that to mount the fair lead to, and just to brace the whole bar up because I'd cut the top plate out of it. Then I put the OCAM winch in, which weighs in at around 25 kilos. Not particularly heavy for a winch, especially a 12,000 pound. Put that down to a couple of things, just the design of the winch in general and the fact that it's got synthetic rope on it, not steel cable. Uh, I thought when I picked it up, geez, that's pretty sturdy and Patrick laughed at me because he's got a high mount with steel cable on it and uh, said, yeah, that is light for a winch. So what does it weigh in it? Well, only one way to find out. Let's chuck it on some scales and see what we come up with. So there you have it. She's sitting right around the 70 kilo mark or just a touch under. I'll put it this way. By the time I throw some lights on it, it'll be on 70, 75 kilos. So that's pretty much where I expected this to be, honestly. Um, I never thought it'd be a light bar. I mean, it's not ridiculously heavy. When we put the fulcrum lift kit in this, um, they are king springs and they're rated to their 50 to 100 kilo fronts, which Nathan from Treadworks pretty much recommended. They are what was in his GQ. Um, and he had a fairly hefty bar and winch and that on that. Um, which I guess it sort of pays to think ahead. I always was gonna put a steel bar and a winch on this when I did the lift. So if you are putting suspension in your car, try and plan ahead. It has been a bit firm in the front, obviously, because it had probably a 10 to 15 kilo bar on it with 50 to 100 kilo front springs. So obviously that's gonna make it ride a bit harder. But yeah, now it should, should soften everything up nicely. I mean, if I had to put, you know, zero to 50 or zero con constant load springs in the front, then Obviously it would have sagged now and it'd be bouncy in the front and then you'd end up putting heavier springs in after the fact. So that's what I'm saying is if you, if you don't want to do something twice, try and plan ahead as much as you can. It's, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, let's throw it on the car and see how it sits. All right, so a mere seven weeks into the two day project, this bar is done. As you can see, I've hooked it all up on the patrol. I've fitted all the accessories. I love the way it looks, but feel free to let us know what you guys think. And before we go test the new OCAM winch under load, I'm going to walk you through some of the features, uh, what I've done to the bar and why I've done it. All right, so how did we get to where we are now? Well, it all started with a factory ARB bar that a fellow named Adrian, who uh, my mate Jace put me onto, was kind enough to donate to the build. From there, what have I done? Well, as you may have noticed, we took the best and we made it better. So I've added this top hoop, which is probably uh, going to start some arguments in the comments as to whether you like it or don't. I don't really care. I like it. It's on my car. Why do I like it? A, I like the look of it. 
B, I like the fact that it just gives it that, that slight more aggressive angle. And yeah, it's mostly cosmetic, to be honest. I've also added this plate in here, which is, I've deleted the factory light mounts as they were too close to the uprights to fit these spotties. So I've added a full width plate. Now the idea behind that was, if I ever want to change lights or add more lights, I can just re-drill, re-tap holes. There's no having to cut and weld once everything's painted. Now, the most major part of this bar you're probably going to notice is the modifications to the bottom center section. So this was not a winch bar. So adding this OCAM 12,000 pound winch, it required a fair bit of modification. Now, if you've been following the build, you will have seen all the work that's gone into making that structurally strong enough to hold the winch, but there was also a lot of work in making it cosmetically look good. Um, I wanted to go something completely different, something that not every car has, not every GQ has, something that I built, and sort of makes it stand out from the crowd. So, if you look in here, you will find there's a fair bit more than you notice at first glance. Um, there's actually about five different angles going on in each one of these corners just to make it sort of look the way I wanted it to look. Now that was just a process of tacking plate in, cutting it out again, reshaping it, tacking it back in until I got it to the point where I wanted it to be. And as I said, also made enough room to accommodate that winch. A few things that I factored into that were airflow, which I think a lot of people tend to just completely forget. Um, didn't want to make the winch too high or the bull bar too high and completely cut out airflow to the radiator. So tried to keep that as low as possible without putting it too low and losing my entry angle. I've changed over these to an LED. They are both a parker and an indicator as all you got in these bars from factory was an indicator and they're still incandescent. Um, ARB don't do a factory replacement LED for those. They'll only sell incandescent still. And the newer bars that have LEDs are a different shape light. Those are an eBay special. Um, we'll see how long they last, but they were the only thing that was available in that size that was a parker and an LED which I thought was pretty neat. Now, these recovery points are also sort of a bit of a center point of the bar. Um, they tie into the winch box, or the winch mount plate, and they also tie into the tubes that run down the chassis rails. As I said, if you've been following along, you would have seen the work that's gone into making them strong enough. Basically, I wanted something that I could have a lot of faith in to do recoveries, um, snatch off and all that sort of thing, not be, not be dangerous, not be worried that it's gonna be a failure point. Now, a bit of a last minute modification was this Heyman Reese style hitch I put on here. Now, this was recommended by our mate Daz, um, and I think it's a brilliant idea. He's got one on his ute, and he mentioned it as I was building the bar, and I thought, now's the perfect time to do it. It's already all cut up. That's basically, obviously not for recovery or anything like that. That is for basically moving trailers around yards, or, you know, in and out of campsites, any of that sort of thing, putting boats in the water. Anything where you might be in a bit of tricky situation where it's easier to push a trailer in rather than back a trailer in. Um, obviously gives you a better vantage point, but also your steering wheels are at the end where the trailer is. So if you really need to get something into a tight corner, it's possible. Now, the other purpose that I came up with for that as I was building it um, was the fact that no matter where I go, anyone that's putting a car on a trailer seems to have a car trailer with a busted winch or it doesn't have a battery in it, or the cable's frayed, or you know, you know how it is. So it often ends up in an awkward situation of like Patrick trying to use his winch to pull someone off on a trailer. With this, I'll be able to run a hitch in there, hook a car trailer to the front of the car, reel this bad boy out, and use it to pull anything onto any trailer. Super practical, super convenient, and yeah, it was just one of those things I thought would be a good addition along the way. Now you may also note that the number plate is on a hinge, this is actually a hinge that comes with a factory Hocam bar, um, and I've used it on my bar. But yeah, super neat, tidy sort of way of mounting that. Um, there just wasn't enough room to physically mount the plate with the winch fair lead there, and you see a fair few GQs with them and mounted up sort of awkward situations. There's not enough room there. There sort of wasn't enough room anywhere else on the bar without maybe mounting it to a tube and then blocking airflow again. So this way it's neat, and yeah, easy access to the winch whenever you need it, just flip that up. But yeah, most of my time has gone into this section through here. So it's probably a lot of work that um, people won't fully notice or appreciate, but I know it's there and uh, yeah, it makes me happy. <laughs> now the other little thing I've added to this is a couple more antenna brackets. So it had one here and it had one that had been just welded on after the fact, actually protruding out the front here, which was obviously going because A, it's illegal and B, it looked horrible. <laughs> So I've added a couple of factory ARB uh, antenna brackets back here, which obviously don't have anything on them yet, but uh, we do have a new antenna and UHF on the way from the guys at GME. 
So look out for that. Um, now the other thing is the finish. You probably haven't seen a finish like this. Um, super common on a bull bar. They're often powder coated or just sprayed in a gloss. This is Dominator. It's basically a truck bed liner. Uh, if you followed along, you will have seen me spray the bar. Also sprayed the rock sliders in it. Um, I love the way it looks. I love the way it's held up on the rock sliders. Because it's a real gloss finish, you don't often get these sort of coatings in a gloss finish. A lot of them are more a satin. And in, because of that, they tend to get more dirty or they hold more dirt. Those rock sliders, if the car will be covered in mud, hose it, the car stays dirty, the rock sliders just rinse off. So it's really good in that way, in that it stays looking clean a lot longer. Um, and I just love the finish. It's super hard wearing, sprays on super thick. Um, in this application, you can spray it out of a normal gun and get it a lot thinner, but I wanted this finish. Uh, like I said, I love the way the finish comes up on the sliders, so I thought I'll do the same on the bar, make everything blend in. Obviously, I've gone with black. Um, the car had an aluminium bar and an aluminium roof rack originally. I'm just sort of loving the contrast between black and red. Um, it looked good with the sliders when I got rid of the aluminium steps and I thought I'd go black with the bar again, just um, get rid of that aluminium bar and, and yeah, keep that sort of contrast going. All right, so that is a basic walkthrough on everything I've done. I'm sure I've forgotten a thing or two, but that pretty much covers what you can see. Now, let's go put this winch under some load and see what it'll do. All right, now we've set up a little bit of a scenario here just to show the line speed under a bit of load. Now, obviously the car's not actually stuck because it's a patrol on a slight incline, all right? What I'm gonna do is we're just gonna run a tree trunk protector around a tree up there, just a straight line pull, just to put this thing under a bit of load, see what sort of speed it runs. All right, now the OCAM winch comes with a wired remote, which I am yet to use because, more importantly, it comes with a wireless remote. That is super easy to throw in your pocket and super convenient. It's also good that it comes with a wired one. Um, people tend to forget batteries in these sort of things, so good to always have that backup. But for this situation, we're not gonna need that. Now, when I wired up this winch, I have done the right thing and put a winch isolator under the bonnet. You can either run a remote one of these in your cabin, um, which is probably convenient if you're using the winch all the time, but to be honest, I'm not gonna use this every day, so I just didn't go to that extreme. Now, you wanna mount these where in a place where they're nice and easy to get at, so, Mine's right here in the front corner, driver's side, quick flick of that, and it is on. Right, the winch now has power. So to run it out, simply flip up the number plate that I mounted on the hinge, turn the power on on the remote, and just release a bit of load off it. Now with the load off, disengage the clutch, and run it out. Now this OCAM winch comes with 30 metres of Dyneema synthetic rope, which is super easy to work with, super light, and unlike every steel cable I ever go near, doesn't stab me in the hands. Simply run that out, hook her up. Now back to the car, re-engage the clutch, and we're good to go. Now, obviously, being that I've got a wireless remote, I haven't run any hardwired switches in here, there's just no need to. Don't have the inconvenience of throwing a cable across the bonnet and the window or any of that. Um, yeah, just chuck that in one hand, steering wheel in the other, and we're all good. Now, this, as I said earlier, is not a proper recovery situation, so this, what we're doing here doesn't exactly apply to if the car was completely stuck. But I'm just gonna throw the car in neutral, and we're gonna use only the power of the winch to pull us up this hill. So for a start, I'm still on the brake, just gonna run the tension up. Okay, foot's now off the brake, car's completely hanging by the winch. Now obviously Patrick's well clear of this just in case, even though it's under very little load, and we're ready to go. So let's see what sort of speed we can get out of this thing. Now you may have noticed I did just bump the idle up a little bit there. That's obviously because the winch draws a fair bit of current and I'm just allowing the alternator to spin a bit faster, keep the battery voltage up. Now you can hear the alternator load, but as you can see, we're still above 12 volts, still about 12.5. Considering it's normally about 13.6, still above charging voltage, so we're fine there. All right, so that's our test done. Um, obviously it's nowhere near under full load, but just to give you a basic example of the sort of power draw and the speed that wish this thing works. Um, I'm stoked with it. Like, it's, yeah, I'm over the moon. It works great. It's given me a lot more confidence to take this thing out road, knowing that 
I have that extra ability to self-recover and not have to fully rely on someone else to get me out of a sticky situation. Now all that's left to do is run the rope back onto the spool. Now as you can see, I'm just keeping a bit of load under this while I do it, um, and that just means that it won't sort of overlap itself on the spool. Usually, rope's a bit easier than cable, it will run itself on nice and neatly, but if you do it without load, it'll just throw itself on wherever it fits. And that's that done. Now I store it with just a little bit of tension on it just to stop it flapping in the breeze. Um, as you could see, another thing with these guys is make sure you keep your hands well out the way when you're doing that sort of thing. Um, they're not, they're not going to forgive you if you get your hands in the way, all right? So make sure you keep your hands well clear and uh, yeah, you'll be fine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, winch isolator. So now that we're done, just flick that off and it's done. Now, if you went out four wheel driving for the day, you just leave that on. There's no problem with leaving it on. Um, it's just basically another safety feature. There is no other circuit protection to this winch. It's direct wired. It's not often that you see anything with a fuse or a breaker going to a winch, just on account of how much current they can draw in spikes, same as a starter motor. There's not really any need to put any sort of circuit protection there. So with that, it means that even if anything was to happen, example, there's a malfunction in the relay box or even it gets damaged, um, you know, front end impact, that sort of thing, and that gets damaged, there's no power supply to it. Um, something that I think a lot of people fail to forget about, and it also stops anyone that may not particularly like you doing anything they shouldn't with your winch while you're not there. Given that it's under the bonnet, the car's locked, it's locked. Now, part of the process of installing the winch was obviously the wiring. When I did that, as per usual with these things, I rewired, well, pretty much every main earth on the car. So from factory, this had just a small earth that ran down to the frame and then back to the motor and everything else is earth through that. Now what I've got is, I've gone complete overkill, um, but a main earth to the motor straight from the battery. And then from the battery, we drop another main earth that runs to the frame, to the chassis and to the winch. So everything's earthed. Um, just, I find a lot of people tend to forget about earthing. I mean, you, you have as much current in a positive as you do in a negative. You need to make sure that the earthing is as good as the power supply. People tend to forget that and um, it leads to a lot of problems down the track. So basically just make sure everything's done properly there. Also, obviously the positive. So that's running straight from here, which is a distribution block terminal um, that's got all my feeds off it now, runs through to the isolator and then drops straight down along with the negative to the relay box on the winch. All right, so that's about the full walkthrough of the bar. I think I covered everything I've done, but uh, I'm sure there's more. Keep your eyes peeled because there will be a few more small things to go on this in the future, as I mentioned earlier, a couple more little modifications and accessories. But yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely stoked with how it looks and how it performs on the car, and uh, let us know what you guys think. Cheers.